Hey guys, Merit Nush here from Rasta IELTS Academy. Before I say anything, make sure to watch this video to the very end because your biggest problem in IELTS reading will be solved as you will get the answer to the question, how can I answer all the questions in reading when I don't understand so many words? Guess what? The answer is very simple. You don't even need to know the definition of all the words in reading passages to realize what the answer to the related question is. How? I will tell you all about it in this video. If you're ready, let's get started. Here you are requiring an IELTS score to study abroad, immigrate to a foreign country or to use the certificate for other purposes. So you start preparing yourself for that with whatever level of English you have. Everything is going well until you decide to apply your knowledge and techniques under exam conditions, taking some tests at home. You open the test book, face three long passages full of advanced words, one hour time, and 40 questions to answer. The first thing you ask yourself would be, I don't know the definition of most of these words. How can I answer the questions? Oh no, I wouldn't make it. But the thing is that even many English native speakers don't know the meaning of all the words that appear. In IELTS exam, you should know what you're expected to do and apply some techniques to get the score you want. Exactly. One part of the story is your own level of English, but the other is how good you are at applying some tricks and strategies to make it through the test and I'm here to teach you one important one today. Very well. The first thing you should know is that in academic reading, the texts are taken from journals, newspapers, books, and magazines, and they are on academic topics, but you don't need to have any specific knowledge to answer the questions. In general reading, the texts are taken from notices, advertisements, company handbooks, official documents, books, magazines, and newspapers. In general reading, the purpose is to make sure the candidate understands the everyday content in an English-speaking country. So, it's okay to not understand the definition of some words. What you should do instead is to guess what the difficult word means in context. To do so, you should take four steps. The first one is to identify the part of a speech. Okay. By part of a speech, I mean how one word functions within a sentence. There are eight parts of a speech in English language. The first one is a noun. As you know, we use nouns to name people, things, places, and ideas. For example, I decided to buy the house. Mm -hmm. The house is a noun. The next one is adjective. You can have an adjective in your sentence. For example, as you know, we can use adjectives to describe those nouns. In a sentence, if I use it, I can say, I decided to buy the expensive house. House is the noun and expensive is the adjective. The next part of a speech can be verb. You can have a verb in your sentence. We use verbs to describe a physical action or state. For example, I go to the gym on Fridays. This is a physical action, going to the gym. Or, the gym is open on Fridays. Here I have a state, the gym is open. There is a to-be verb, not an action or non-action verb. The next part of a speech is adverb. We use adverbs to describe the verb that I just talked about. For example, I go to the gym quickly. Quickly is my adverb. The next one is the prepositions. We use prepositions to show relationship of words and phrases. For example, the key is on the desk. On is the preposition of place here. Or, I went into the house. Into is my preposition. The next one is the pronoun in the sentence. Actually, pronouns replace nouns. For example, my mother is very kind. I love her so much. My mother is the subject here. And as I'm talking about her a second time, I don't say I love my mother so much. I say I love her so much. 
And the next one, conjunctions. We use conjunctions to join words, phrases, or clauses. For example, she is happy and generous. And is my conjunction here. Or I work until you finish studying. Until. We were tired, so we didn't go to the party. So is another conjunction. And the next one is interjection. We use interjections to show strong feelings and emotions. For example, wow, what a lovely kid you have. Wow is that word. So make sure to learn how a word functions in the sentence. This way, you can guess the meaning of the difficult word in context. Let's look at an example to see how we can do that in the real test. So here we have a paragraph of an IELTS reading about perils with so many words that you may not know the meaning of, and that's the point. We just want to get the general idea of each sentence by identifying the part of a speech of difficult words. First, I read the whole paragraph, and then we will zoom in on the unfamiliar words. Here we go. There is a mystery and preciousness that we attach to perils. Yet, despite what some people believe, it has nothing to do with a grain of sand. Perils, which have long been the treasures of the wealthy, are often the products of the dead worms, which remain entombed at the center of the jewels, beautiful, ethereal, and translucent. Okay, in the first sentence, as you read, you face the word preciousness that you might not know the meaning of. The thing is that if you identify it's part of a speech, you will get the idea of it. I'd say preciousness is a noun. But how did I understand? The sentence says there is a mystery and preciousness. I can see that, first of all. I have there is, which is always followed by a noun. Secondly, I have the article e, so I need a noun after that. Besides, the suffix ness always makes a noun, like happiness, brightness. In addition to that, I have the conjunction and. So as mystery, the word mystery is a noun, which is a very simple word, you realize that the next word would also be a noun. So even though you didn't know the meaning of this word, you realized it was a noun talking about something, not an action or a feature of something, not an adjective. It's a noun. Now, the next step to guess the meaning of a difficult word is looking for the synonym of the word. You may not understand the definition of a word, but there may be some close or direct synonyms to that somewhere there. Let's look at the same paragraph again. Okay, it said, there is a mystery and preciousness that we attach to perils. Yet, despite what some people believe, it has nothing to do with a grain of sand. Perils which have long been the treasures of the wealthy are often the products of the dead worms, which remain entombed at the center of the jewels, beautiful, ethereal, and translucent. In the second sentence, it says, perils which have long been the treasures of the wealthy are often the products of dead worms, which remain entombed at the center of the jewels, beautiful, ethereal, and translucent. Oh, I see. You may find the last three words difficult. But without even knowing the exact definition, let's guess what they imply, what they want to say. In this part, it says that perils have belonged to the rich people since they use them in their accessories, for example. But actually, peril is made of dead worms. The dead worms are trapped at the center of jewels, beautiful, ethereal, and translucent. First of all, by the explanation I gave you, you realize that it wants to talk about how the pearl is trapped in the jewel. So it wants to define it, and for that we need an adjective. Therefore, these three words are three adjectives. This was identifying the part of a speech. Secondly, you may not know the meaning of ethereal and translucent, but you do know the meaning of beautiful and that it has a positive meaning. 
So, as we have the conjunction AND between these three adjectives, the two other will also have a positive and close meaning to beautiful. So, look for the synonyms or the words with a close meaning. I mean, you can at least say if it has a positive or negative meaning. The third step would be to look for the antonym of the word. It means that sometimes you are given a word that you don't know the definition of, but if you keep reading, you may find a word with an opposite meaning, which uh, will give you the definition of the difficult word. For example, there are many ancient buildings in Rome, unlike Dubai, where you can only find modern and new ones. In this sentence, you may not know the meaning of ancient, but following that, you see the word unlike, which always shows contrast. So, what is mentioned after that can be the antonym of ancient. As ancient is an adjective describing buildings, we realize that modern and new are the two other adjectives which are the antonyms of ancient. Eventually, we understand that ancient means old. And finally, Number four, look for the definition of the word. By definition, I mean that sometimes you don't know the meaning of the word, but in the following part, the word may be described by giving explanations or examples for it. For example, she has such an exquisite accent, which allows her to speak very beautifully. Here, you may not know the definition of exquisite, but in the following part, it is describing what it means by an exquisite accent, which is to speak beautifully. So, I can guess that, first of all, exquisite has a positive meaning, and that it may have the same or close meaning to beautiful. Let's look at another paragraph from an IELTS reading to understand it better. Here you see a paragraph and we will read the first sentence only. Nuanza, Morphy and Fan argued that private risk management tools like private insurance, commodity future markets and rural finance can help small-scale producers mitigate risk and allow for investment in improvements. Okay, in the first part of the sentence, it is talking about private risk management tools. But you may not quite understand what it means by that. However, if you keep reading, you will find some examples for it, like private insurance, commodity future markets, and rural finance. So this term is described by the given examples. Very well, guys. In this video, we found the key to success in IELTS reading. Regardless of what vocabulary range you have, you can use these four techniques to guess the definition of difficult words. Thank you very much for watching this video. Stay tuned and see you soon. Do you want to know what band score you'll get in the IELTS speaking test? Perhaps you want to improve your performance and prepare yourself for the real test? Then why not book an online mock test with us that will last for 25 minutes, 12 minutes of the test itself and 13 minutes of comprehensive feedback. Plus, we'll give you useful tips on how to make your performance better. Remember, all our examiners are especially trained by British Council instructors, so we know how to help you. Join us.